If Sean Combs is focusing on things he cannot control, he will have a miserable experience. When he can call home, when he can visit, the living conditions, exercising, maybe an hour a day, showering a few hours a week. If he fixates on that, it is going to be miserable. And every day will feel like a year. On the other hand, if he can learn from those who have come before him and master the experience, my business partnership of 26 consecutive years for a nonviolent crime, including eight years in the penitentiary, he never complained. He focused on his family, trying to prove worthy of the love and support of his family. If he can do that, the experience, it won't be easy. I'm not insane. It will be more bearable. The choice is up to him. And as far as we know right now, he has been kept um, in solitary confinement or the shoe right now, and he's been on suicide watch. How different is that experience from being in the general population? It's much harder. If you like to be around people, you like communication, if you're an extrovert, he has to understand others have gone through it and emerged successfully. And what he and his lawyers have to understand is they have like a messaging problem. They continue to say things that do not get them closer to what they want, which is bond. It's led to indictments. And if he can begin to introspect and kind of reverse engineer some of his choices and recognize it is my decisions alone that have led me here. And if I can communicate differently moving forward, maybe the ultimate sentence, even if convicted, could be better, perhaps could lead to bond eventually. But it can be very difficult in segregation. And his lawyers have to stop blaming and excusing and talking about how difficult the experience is because here's what a judge is going to say. If you were so concerned about what these filthy living conditions would be like in a detention center, if you were so concerned about your safety, you wouldn't have obstructed justice. You would not have, according to the government, created victims over a sustained period of time. Until he changes his message, more problems are In recent years, music mogul Sean Diddy Combs has found himself at the center of growing controversy, with numerous celebrities stepping forward to expose troubling aspects of his life. Behind the glamour and success lies a web of allegations involving manipulation, abuse, and illicit activities. Today, we're diving deep into the allegations that have cast a shadow over Diddy's legacy. Subscribe to Pop Gossip now. Let's start with his influence in the music industry. One built on success, but clouded by dark rumors. Disgraced music mogul Sean Diddy Combs, once known for his lavish lifestyle and living large in his multi-million dollar mansions, has a new home as he awaits trial in his federal sex trafficking case. Last week, the Bad Boy Founders defense team unsuccessfully fought to keep the music producer out of federal jail after his arrest. Now his new digs once house other high-profile inmates, including R. Kelly, Fetty Wap, Sam Bankman fried and Ghislaine Maxwell. Diddy is currently housed at the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn, New York, a stark difference from the glitz, glamour, and wealth in Hollywood and Star Island in Miami Beach, Florida. But MDC Brooklyn has been described as hell on earth with horrifying conditions. The facility, which now houses Diddy, opened in the early 90s and is the only federal jail in New York City after the Bureau of Prisons closed its Metropolitan Correctional Center in 2021 after many issues came to light in the wake of Jeffrey Epstein's suicide just two years earlier. When he can call home, when he can visit, the living conditions, exercising maybe an hour a day, showering a few hours a week, if he fixates on that, it is going to be miserable and every day will feel like a year. On the other hand, if he can learn from those who have come before him and master the experience, my business partnership, 26 consecutive years for a nonviolent crime, including eight years in the penitentiary, he never complained. He focused on his family, trying to prove worthy of the love and support of his family. If he can do that, the experience, it won't be easy. I'm not insane. It will be more bearable. The choice is up to him. And as far as we know right now, he has been kept um, in solitary confinement or the shoe right now, and he's been on suicide watch. How different is that experience from being in the general population? It's much harder. If you like to be around people, you like communication, if you're an extrovert, and then suddenly you are isolated 23 hours a day on total lockdown, I'm not spinning that it's difficult. It will test the strongest mind. But he has to understand others have gone through it and emerge successfully. And what he and his lawyers have to understand is they have like a messaging problem. They continue to say things that do not get them closer to what they want, which is bond. It's led to indictments. And if he can begin to introspect and kind of reverse engineer some of his choices and recognize early controversies and industry manipulation, Diddy's rise to fame in the music world didn't come without whispers of manipulation. Celebrities have hinted at how Diddy allegedly used his power to control those around him, painting a picture of a man driven by more than just talent. He has been accused of exploiting his artists, withholding royalties, and keeping them dependent on his goodwill. It was a system that many believe was designed to ensure his dominance in the industry, at any cost. 
One insider noted that if you were under Diddy's label, you had to play by his rules or risk losing everything. There was little room for independent success under his watch. Some have even suggested that his influence went beyond business dealings and into personal control over his artists. The Cassie Ventura lawsuit. Disturbing allegations. Perhaps the most shocking claims against Diddy come from Cassie Ventura, who filed a lawsuit against him, revealing a dark and twisted relationship that extended far beyond the music industry. The lawsuit outlines a disturbing pattern of manipulation and abuse, with Diddy allegedly using wealth and luxury to control Cassie. He reportedly showered her with extravagant gifts, including luxury apartments and designer clothes, all while subjecting her to emotional and physical abuse behind the scenes. Cassie's allegations paint Diddy as a controlling partner, prone to violent outbursts. She claims that what began as an indulgent relationship quickly turned toxic, with Diddy allegedly coercing her into degrading situations. He's even accused of forcing her into acts of violence and exploiting her personal life for his gain. The lawsuit describes how he destroyed a fellow artist's car after discovering the man's romantic interest in her, further illustrating the lengths Diddy would go to maintain control. Most disturbing, however, are the claims of sex trafficking, where Cassie was allegedly forced into horrific sexual encounters with others, filmed by Diddy himself. According to Cassie, she was given drugs to endure these situations, making it easier for her to disassociate from the trauma. A lawsuit filed against Sean Diddy Combs accuses the music performer and executive of rape, physical abuse, and sex trafficking. The singer Cassie says the incidents occurred throughout her 10-year relationship with Combs. Her suit was filed under a law that allows alleged sexual offense victims to file past the statute of limitations. Cassie says she wanted to speak out before that law expires next week. Mr. Combs has denied all the allegations. For more, let's bring in entertainment attorney Dante Mills. So Dante, thanks for being with us. Cassie has signed with that label when she was just 19 and Sean Combs was 37. What's alleged to have happened after that? Thank you for having me, Catherine. So in this lawsuit, I just wanted to be clear, this is a civil lawsuit. This is not a criminal lawsuit. There's no chance here uh, as we stand for Sean Combs to go to jail. It's a civil lawsuit about money. And the claim is that during their relationship, uh, he was physically abusive, uh, that he uh, required or demanded that she perform certain sexual acts with other people while he was there. Uh, but the truth, sometimes it hurts. Right. It hurts people and they don't want to hear that shit, but right. I'm trying to tell you, nah. nigga asked me, could he take me shopping? And it fucked me up because I'm looking like, what the fuck did this nigga just say? I want to take you shopping. I got a bankroll out this motherfucker. I want to take you shopping. Why? Because when you walk around looking so motherfucking good, I want to feel like, God damn it, that motherfucker with me. That's all I want to do. That's all I want to do. But when a nigga tell me he want to take me shopping, what the fuck is the matter with this nigga? Wait, hold on. Well, where was this at? This was at the wedding. Oh, no. Nah, right after the wedding. I'm beefing with Steve Stout. Stout and Puff telling show. you you're going to take you shopping. After the show. Oh, my God. Swear to God. Oh, no. Swear to God. Now. Everybody going to want to be at Chris Lady's wedding right now. Everybody going to be like, yo, I was there. Well, and I'm bugging because uh, while they were sitting there at the wedding, like I'm like this, look. Because you know they both stay here. Mm. I'm the only one that's been vocal about this long before it actually. Oh, nah, nah, nah. You've been saying this for a long time, bro. And like people like, yo, why is he saying it like you crazy? But I also nah. didn't participate. I also didn't go to those parties. So a lot of the celebrity culture that you don't hear saying anything is because they participated to a degree. But um, I mean, like, why you never went to those parties, bro? Like, you know, those were like the talk of the town back in the day. Like, is there like a reason why you ain't go? I'm just not with all that freaky shit. Like yeah. all of the stuff that he's doing, I'm not into that type of stuff. I'm just yeah. a little more, maybe you could say basic or normal. You go to the 90s and Keefy D said he, he paid him to kill Tupac. So look, like you get the craziest accusations you had TMZ. It seems that the glamour and success Diddy promised came with a price. 50 Cent's feud with Diddy. 50 Cent has been one of Diddy's most vocal critics, and in the midst of Diddy's legal troubles, their long-standing feud has only escalated. Recently, 50 Cent took to social media, using the scandalous details of Diddy's sex trafficking investigation as fuel for his attacks. 